unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. You make my life so beautiful. Because as you were, you have made me There's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore. You make my life. You make my life so beautiful. Tell it. And as you were. And as you are.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 10. If you're there, you say, Amen. Ecclesiastes 10. All right, one, two, three, let's go. It says, If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct. Read it again. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, then he must put to more strength, but wisdom is profitable to direct. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. In other words, in the simplest term, if you deal, for example, you have something, a piece, any piece, whether it's wood or meat or anything you want to cut, if it's blunt, if what you want to use, the iron you want to use is blunt, Bible says you'll need more strength. Praise the Lord. You will need more strength. Because the iron by which you use is what? Blunt. Praise the Lord Jesus. The iron by which you use is what? Is blunt. So the sharper the edge of that, the easier it is for you to cut through and the less the strength applied to get what you need. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now put that in our daily experiences. The reason why many people use too much strength and they labor too much to get certain things, in fact even receive little, is because the iron is blunt. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, if it's not wet, right, if it's not sharpened, you will require more strength. So there are two things. You either sharpen your iron, praise the Lord, and cut with precision and speed, and quicken in everything that you're doing, or you take longer. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You take longer. And then the Bible says that in this instance, wisdom is what? Profitable to direct. The word therefore directing is to proceed to success. To execute quicker. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a, there's a necessity to, 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 to succeed. You know, to, to please, to be suitable, to be proper, to be advantageous. To give you a high advantage. To give you success in everything that you do. Wisdom directs. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Then as wisdom is a precision. That means that the reason why we are slowed in many things as Christians is because of wisdom. Praise the Lord. And that is why the Bible says that Ephraim is an unwise son. For he tarries longer in the place where men ought to work. Give birth. Praise the Lord. He says the iniquity of Ephraim is bound upon and his sin is hid. And the sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. For he is a what? An unwise son. Right? For he should not stay long in the place of breaking forth of children. He's not supposed to delay where they produce. And because of that, the Bible says he is an unwise son. If he had wisdom, when he gets to the place of bringing forth, he'll bring forth quicker. Many people have explanations, all kinds of explanations. Oh, me, the reason why this is not happening in my life is not yet God. If the time, the time of God comes, I'll get this. Oh, I'm believing God for this. I'm supposed to be believing God, believing God for that. Praise the Lord. And if it's delayed, ah, they say, no, maybe it's not the intention of God. Some people even think that God has, has placed certain people to be successful and others not to be successful. You understand? So they say, ah, no, in this world, that guy found a Christian with a weak line, common mistakes in salvation. They say, you know, we're all like this. Praise the Lord. And the Christian compared themselves with the people in the world. And they were saying, we're like this. We're not equal. We're like these fingers. Therefore, maybe me, I'm here, and then probably so and so is here. And I'm thinking, well, you should never compare yourself with any man in the world. Because the truth of the matter is, even when you yoke, the scriptures say unequally yoking. You're already unequal before you yoke. You're already better before you even come together in the same slate. Hallelujah. So then how can you admire? Actually, I think we've twisted the word for so long. We err, the Bible says, not knowing the scriptures and the power. Today, you see Christians admire men in the world 
more than the men in the world admiring us. The Bible says, men shall admire thee and envy thee. Ten shall come and hold at your lap and say, let us go with thee, for the Lord is with thee. Men in the world are supposed to be admiring us. We're not supposed to be admiring people in the world. You're not supposed to be inspired by people in the world. Even parents, when you're dealing with your children, don't give examples of unborn again kids. You know some parents, when they're dealing with their children, you see that neighbor's kid, he worked so hard and he got a car. You, you've not yet... No, listen, when your child is born again, don't compare them. Because it doesn't matter how long and what it will take for this one to get their cars and buildings, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. Compare them with other born again successful people, if you like. Which is wrong, but if, if you must. Are you hearing me? It's wrong, but if you must. Because he, it's not right for your child to be compared. Don't ever compare your children. In the first place, it's wrong. Praise the Lord. The other one is more clever than you. No. No, 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 no. no. Praise the Lord. Because many kids will not live to the fullest of their potential because they compare themselves with other potentials. And sometimes the potentials they compare themselves with cannot be weighed and compared to what is inside them. Because you make the other ones their standard. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The other ones are not supposed to be their standards. Your child's standard is supposed to be God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So, the, the, there is a place where I've seen in the Christian faith um, where people give excuse for failing. You get it? Because we've learned how to give excuse. Oh, I should have done this, but this happened. The other day I saw a taxi with writings behind and saying, Tuan because na ya abo. The guy didn't mention who, but he said, would have worked and been successful, but those ones who? We don't know who they are, but those ones. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you. When you mature in God, the first thing that you learn is taking responsibility of your life. You might not be responsible of the family you were raised. You might not be responsible of the situations that you're going through. You might not be responsible of who gave you the job and who didn't. Who employed you, who didn't. Who gave you audience and who did. Who stepped on you and who did not. But you're responsible for your next step in life. Why? Because Joshua 1.8 tells us these words are for your meditation. They don't depart out of your mouth day and night. And he says that thou mayest observe to do as according. And then he says, and then shall you make your way prosperous and have good success. Whether there's somebody standing in your way or not, whether there's somebody who wants seat or not, whether there's somebody who loves you that way or not, whether there's somebody to support you there or not, whether the whole world is fighting you or not, he says, then shall you have good success and make your way prosperous. There's a place where the word of God starts to come out of your spirit. And your meditations every day start to cause you to do things in God. And consequently, you realize that the place, the highest place of liberty is for you to choose how far. How wide you want it. See, some people say, ah, me, me, God, me, God, me, God put this one for me and he said, me, he has appointed me to do this. And I am faithful with my ten. <laughs> Listen, unless you don't understand the mind of the spirit... The parable of stewardship dictates that every man must function in the anointing of multiplication. Multiplication is not for a few people. Every man must know how to multiply. And that is why he rewards the guy who multiplies. You understand? The money they left with him. And then he (laughs) disqualifies the guy who did not multiply. Some people just keep. You understand? So at the end of the day, they say, ah, here is what you gave me. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? No, 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 no. God requires that whatever he has given to us, it has to be multiplied. The talents that we carry in our lives, they must carry multiplication. Multiplication is a spirit. Whether you're a business person, whether you're a student, whether you're a pastor, wherever you are, whatever you do, there has to be a seed of multiplication because that's the essence of greatness. The Bible says the man grew so great He became great until he became very great. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because God was with him. Simple. Because God was with him. Those people who feel that for them, God has called them to live a very simple life, those ones, they didn't come today. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. God could not have intended them to come. But the Bible says, man works great. Give me the amplified. Amplified. He says, 
the man, listen, became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. Why? Because he carried blessing. Praise the Lord. In some people's lives, it's, it's sin to be wealthy. It's sin. They feel unholy to have a nice car. They still feel unworthy to sleep well. Ah, me, God, as long as you take me to heaven. No. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the Lord pleasures in the prosperity of his people. Do you know the word pleasure? He joys. You understand? He sees you prosper and says, That's my boy, Apostle Grace. Makaya. Setele. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. So the Bible says that the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord pleasures. He celebrates when you prosper. Not only financially, in all aspects of your life. When God sees you make it, he says, wow, that's mine. That's my child. That's my boy. Who taught them how? It's me. Because the Bible says he teaches us to profit. He doesn't teach us to lose. The Lord teaches us to profit. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, back to the point here. Now, you see that the man lacketh wisdom. And because the man lacketh wisdom, because wisdom in its own is the entity that sharpeneth the iron. Are you hearing me? And because they don't have the mind that sharpeneth the iron, consequently, it is blunt. And then they exercise more energy. Praise the Lord. Somebody takes 20 years to do what takes another man two days to do. Praise the Lord. It's okay if they're not born again. But it's not okay when they're born again. God wants better for you. Praise the Lord. This world is too big for us to fulfill our dreams. Each one of us, by the way, each one of us can have a share in this and we're a success in everything God has called us to do. Praise the Lord. You picture a nanny or housemaid who you have and you're paying 50000 right? A month. I gave an example some time back. If it's 50000 a month, a year, that's 600000 In 10 years, that's $6 million. In 20 years, that's how many? 12. In 30 years, that's how many? 18. In 40 years, that's how many? 24. That means that there is somebody who can work for 40 years and earn 24 million. There is a man in this world who earns that in two days. Two hours. You understand? And thereby they gain status spiritually. And that is why rich people are called Mosei. You understand? That's why a lot of money is called Kakade. When you become so rich, even if you're 20, even if you're 15, they'll start to call you Mosei. <laughs> Isn't it? Why? Because you've redeemed time. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor they're talking about me. They're talking about me. They're talking about me. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you can imagine, what is the difference between the man which makes 24 million shillings in 40 years and the man who makes it in two hours. Wisdom. Wisdom. Amen. Wisdom. That is why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 that blessed is the man which findeth wisdom. Let's open there. Let's begin from about 13. Verse 13. Read. Happy is the man that what? Findeth wisdom. And the man that getteth understanding. What happens? For the merchandise of it. Give me the amplified. I need in the amplified. Huh. Let's read. Happy. Uh huh. Blessed. Fortunate. Enviable. Is the what? The man who finds skillful and godly wisdom. And the man who gets understanding. Drawing it from God's word and life's experiences. Are you hearing me? For the gaining of it is better than the gaining of silver and the profit of it is better than five gold. Skillful and godly wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you can wish for is to be compared to her. The, I, I love the way the message says it. Read there. Uh, yeah. Her value, read it, exceeds all trappings of wealth. Nothing you could wish for holds a candle to her. Next verse. Length of days is in her right hand. That means you live longer because you carry wisdom, right? And in her left hand are riches and what? Honor. Next verse. Uh-huh. Our ways are highways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Praise the Lord. Next verse. She is a what? A tree of light to those who lay hold on her, and happy, blessed, fortunate to be envied is everyone who holds her fast. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. You become happy 
You're envied. Praise the Lord. You're blessed when you get a hold of her. You listen, you cannot carry wisdom and worry about money. You cannot. You cannot carry wisdom and worry about life. You cannot. You will live long. I told people one time I was too sick and I was praying. And the Spirit of the Lord came to me as I thought of I was going to die. <laughs> and he told me, Grace Vega, you know too much to die. You understand? You know too much to die. And that is when I realized that wisdom preserves. Wisdom preserves. That's what the Bible says. Knowledge and understanding. Those things preserve you. There is a way God can't allow you when there is still stuff in your spirit to release. Hallelujah. It, it, it preserves. You understand? The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. Now, if I know, that means I'm preserved because I have knowledge. Listen, if you want to live longer, read too much. Very simple. Don't even waste your time. No, no. He says the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. They preserve. The moment they see knowledge in a man, they keep you. The moment they see knowledge in you, they keep you. The moment they see you know too much, they guard you. Listen, God guards men who know. I say God guards people who know. That's why you must invest your life in knowledge. Because that's the only guarantee of long life. You will live long because you know. God invests too much in us through knowledge. And that is why people die, the Bible says, because they lack. It's very simple. The moment you avoid of understanding, it is easy for you to die. But men who know don't just die. Tell your neighbor, I don't just die. Tell your neighbor, I don't just die. I cannot just die. I can't wake up and just die. Hallelujah. I decree and declare because of how much you know. You won't wake up dead. Does it even exist? Wake up dead. English. You understand? People won't wake up and you're dead. Let me say that. With long life, you will what? Satisfy you. Tell your neighbor, I'm living long. I'm still around. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. One time when uh, many years ago I had gone somewhere to preach. And then I was preaching in a meeting. And I said to pray for a girl. And then a spirit spoke through her. And said, I was going to kill her 23. She was 21. Now I said, imagine if she had not come for that meeting. Imagine if she had not come to that meeting. The guy said, I was going to kill her. The devil spoke. I was going to kill her 23. She was 21. She was so possessed. Literally, you could see thousands of things in her soul. Praise the Lord. The devil is a liar. Somebody says the devil is a liar. Now I'm going to go deeper. Praise the Lord. So I realized that when wisdom is in your spirit, you don't worry. Because it's the precision that directs you. It's the precision that gives you success quickly. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, because of that, Sometimes people ask, I want wisdom. I want to walk in wisdom. But many people don't really understand what wisdom is. Many people don't really understand what wisdom is. You see, let me first share this. This is hard, but you'll understand it. God does not intend to deal with a new creature. Praise the Lord. Casting light of a futuristic experience without the expectation in that creature to understand the end of those experiences. Are you hearing me? The future, even though it is told to us by the spirit of truth and it is revealed every time we meet God, the end thereof that advances you from progressive knowledge, gnosko, to advanced and complete knowledge, epignosko, carries a certain expectation and a hope in your spirit to know your end. I might not be able to explain the seven milestones that I might go through next year, but I'm certain that there is an end revealed to me of the Lord by reason of the place that I carry in God. Because the new creature in Christ, the Bible says, has been made to be conformed to the very image. You understand? That conformation, that sumophosis, means that it's in likeness of mind and character. Jesus is not going to be surprised next year. You shouldn't be. 
For who has known the mind of Christ that he should instruct him? Who has known that way? He says, but we have the mind which is of Christ. Even though the spirit of truth reveals to us a future, it reveals to us a future as a confirmation experience of the affirmations of the word of God in our soul. Prophecy in the New Testament dispensation is a confirmation, not an affirmation. You're not going to be because word is spoken forth. You are already even before the word is spoken forth. Why? Because he finished his works from the beginning of the world. That is why a man of the spirit can tap into the understanding of God. In a dispensation where the Christ is not in the flesh and he claim a bruising. A wounding for transgression. A bruising of our iniquity. Isaiah 53 verse 5. And he says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. He's prophesying. He's claiming healing. The Christ is not yet come. But he puts it as a present continuous experience. By reason of the word of Christ coming out of him. Of course they saw in part. And therefore they prophesied in part. But the Bible says but the third part is dealt away with. Now you and I are in that fullness. We are not seeing in part. Why? I'll explain why we cannot see in part. In Christ, the Bible says, all things consist. And ye are in him. Ye are in him. Ye are complete in him. Ye are complete in him. There is no part. There is perfection. Are you hearing me? Our completeness in Christ is not our religious affiliation. You're complete before you become Baptist. You're complete before you're Pentecostal. You're complete before you're Protestant. When you accept it, says you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. It means that that completeness has distributed to your spirit everything that perfects you as a man to function in his fullness. And the Bible says, of his fullness we have received. Of his fullness we have received. Not of his part. No, he says, and of his fullness have we received. What? Grace for grace. We receive of his fullness. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, because the new creature sees and functions in the fullness of the things of the spirit, God does not expect you to be one which believes in part and functions only in a part. Praise the Lord. Your future is not supposed to be a speculation. I am suspecting. I am expecting. No, 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 no. I know. I know. I know. I know. Even in such worse places, Paul says, we know that all things work together for good. He didn't say we expect, we hope that. No. He says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Somebody say, I carry the fullness. I am complete in Christ. Praise the Lord. And that is why Isaiah, he understood the mystery. The mystery was, when this happening took place in the heavenly places, when this experience took place in the heavenly places, the completion of that story eternally gave man access to function in the fullness of that story because of its completion in the heavenly places. You know of the Lamb of God slain in the flesh. And then the scriptures cast the light on the Lamb of God, which was slain before the foundations of the world. You realize that for you, your experience was when you beheld him in the flesh. But there are men which held him as the Christ before the foundations of the world. And all that dwell upon the earth and worship him, Revelation 13, 18, who are not written in the book of the Lamb of Life, slain from the foundation of the world. There is a place where this, this was finished, a story. So, when Jesus comes in the flesh, God functions in past tense. When you become born again, (laughs) you're plugged into past tense. So, when Paul saw that experience, he says, Ah, yeah, we have an unction from on high. We know all things. We don't hope all things. We know all things. We don't expect all things. We know all things. Ah, but I don't know. Listen, that's your problem. You've not understood how to exercise that wisdom. The wisdom to know all things and have a control over our future comes from a man plugging themselves in the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. Are you hearing me? Because the Bible says, it can only be of faith that it will be of grace. If you want God to distribute a grace in your life, to function in what you want to see in your future. Begin from a faith perspective. Because eternal beings understand only from a faith line. 
if we don't live by faith, we live by faith. Because you know, the moment you walk out of faith, you start to die. What is faith? It is the substance of things hoped for, things not seen. You must carry evidence of your future. Are you hearing me? I'm not, listen, we, the past, these levels of we are believing God that you'll get married. Come on! In the book. Shut out! For the Bible says, none shall lack half met. For the Spirit hath gathered them. The word of the Lord has spoken it. He says, none shall lack. The mind of the finished work of Christ is that you cannot lack your mate. It's not believing you for a mate. No, you cannot lack your mate. The Bible says you've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. The mind of the Spirit does not expect you to go in the presence of God to ask what you already carry. He expects you to go with thanksgiving. Why? Because He knows that He knows that you carry these things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your prayer life, that's why many of you don't get. Because when you go to the presence of God, you ask for what you already have. And God wants to understand. How can I go to God and I say, God, I want a black suit. But I have a black suit. I, I want. And God is like, what are you putting on? That's blindness. That's called blindness. That's called blindness. When you don't know who you are and what you have in God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why the Bible says you have not received the spirit of this world. Because the spirit of this world casts light to lack. He says, but you've received the Spirit, which is of God, that you may know the things which are freely given. The, the abundance of the life of the Christian, a child of God, is supposed to be that when you get into the things of God, you're like a little kid who has been thrown in a candy store. It's full. They tell you, take what you want, as much as you want. That is supposed to be the life of salvation. I have everything that pertains to life and godliness. I've been blessed with every spirit spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's how I go to God. I go blessed. You understand? I don't go, I don't go to God cast. I don't go to God feeling cast. Are you hearing me? Situations might be different. I don't care. I don't give a damn how situations appear. I have to convince my spirit every morning that I can either look at the things and situations that I go through or I can look at the author and the finish of my faith. <laughs> Fully persuaded that he is the author the finisher. He shall perfect that which concerns you. He shall bring to maturity. That is a given. Praise the Lord. It's non negotiable. Now, we're not supposed to be living in a futuristic experience, are you hearing me, as men which are indifferent to the future. Because we have seen our end in Christ by reason of the word. The word has brought us to the end which is in Christ. In other words, I am in my future. I am in my future. Are you hearing me? I am in my future. How can a man claim Jesus and say he was wounded? Was. He didn't say he will be wounded. He said he was wounded. He had not yet come. He was bruised. He had not yet come. He had not yet come. But Isaiah said he was. Why? Because he saw the experience from the foundation of the world. Are you hearing me? So when the man is walking the surface of his earth and such revelation hits his spirit. Are you hearing me? His definition of it is finished. is not on the physical cross. It is way older than that. Listen, the testimony of Christ is older than his existence in the flesh. And men which get a hold of that are men which understand the true dimension called eternal life. And this is eternal life. That ye might know the one true God and his only son, Jesus Christ. There is nothing you're believing God for that is already not settled. You're not even supposed to be entering a life of believing God. No. The Bible says, we which have believed have entered into rest. Do you know why you're suffering? You have not believed. You're a believing Christian. You have not believed. Are you hearing me? I would have fainted if I had not believed. He didn't say, I would have fainted if I was not believing. A man who is believing is not a believer. A believer has believed. For example, a lady came to me and told me, Apostle, I'm believing God for healing. I told her you're going to die. She told me, how can I die if I'm believing God for healing? It's because you're believing. You're believing. You're in a present, continuous experience of believing. <laughs> we which have believed rest, in which hope and understanding, that he that knew no sin became sin, that we've been dead unto sins, my live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were, not will be, were, healed. 
So my healing is already settled before I even feel pain. Before the next attack in your body, your healing should be a settled deal. So that when it comes, it finds a rested fella. Because you see, the place of disease is actually getting out of rest. This is disease. You understand? When you get out of rest, you become sick. This is. But we which have believed have entered into rest. That means we cannot get out of the ease that we carry. And if you cannot get out of the ease that you carry, you realize that the miracle of the New Testament dispensation is not divine healing. It is divine health. You're healthy today. Ten years down the road, you forget where hospitals are. Your medical cards get old and expires without using it in the name of Jesus. You raise your children one year, two years, ten years, fifteen years. They are not sick. Twenty. And they say, what are you doing with your child? You tell them, you see, I carry him a car. Because my future is present and past. Hallelujah. When the Bible says that he has redeemed Jacob and has ransomed him from the hand which is mightier than he, it means you will never fall in the hand of a man mightier. Put it in your head. Regardless of which situation is in your life, you will never fall in the hand of one mightier. Regardless of what you're going through, you will never fall in the hand of one mightier. Everything you're falling into, you're mightier. Greater is he which is in you than the devil in the world. And he says, for we are more than conquerors by Christ which strengthens us. The word there for more than conqueror. It, it, it is a translation that literally means that you, you thrive most in pressure. When pressure comes, that's the time you, 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 you're happy. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? James says, count it all but joy, dear brethren, when diverse temptations befall you. You don't say, oh God, I have a problem. I don't know how to deal with it. I've suffered. No. He says, count it all. Give the message. The message says, my brethren, consider it a gift. That's why I was telling you before it's a gift. Consider it a gift. <laughs> consider it a gift. When tests and challenges come at what? At you from all sides. Why? He says, you know that under pressure, what happens? Your faith life. Is tossed into open and shows its true colors. You have to get to the point when the devil knows that when he puts you under pressure, you're going to break hell loose. He knows that when he puts you under pressure, you're going to disorganize and dislodge, destroy, disease all demons in hell. When pressure comes, that's when you function most. That is why you don't chase away persecution. Don't chase it away, darling. Don't you want to see power? Don't you want to see glory? Don't be, come on, don't chase away men which speak evil of you. The Bible says the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. When you're at your workplace and a, a, a funny friend speaks evil about you, go in the room and start dancing. Are you hearing me? Makaya. Makaya. Why? Because the Bible says that don't worry, don't fret when men speak, or speak evil about you because of Christ. For the spirit of Christ, of glory and of Christ rests upon you. If you don't have glory, you can't attract hatred. You can't attract hatred. No, no. Read it. Give me a message. Read. Uh -huh. If you are abused because of Christ, count yourself. Fortunate. Why? It's the Spirit of God and His glory in you that brought you to the notice of others. There was a time when men didn't know you existed. There was a time when they didn't know your name, they didn't have your address, they didn't know your father, they didn't know but now they know you. Praise God! I feel sorry for a man who's not noticed. And that is why I speak in your spirit. From today, they are going to notice you. When you enter a taxi, they'll say she's the one. When you get in your car, they'll say that's the guy. That does in a restaurant. And the woman came. She said, you must be Apostle Grace. You must 
the first time I've met you, but you must be the one. I say, Makaya. Makaya. Some Christians pray opposite. Oh, people, people, they're speaking about me. People, they're saying bad things about me. The people, they're saying things. That, that, that everyone is on my case. What do you want them to do? You have glory. If you don't want it, tell God I don't want glory. But when glory settles on you, woman, even people who you have never harmed will speak evil about you. But the Bible says, count it all by joy. Hallelujah. That day somebody came in my office and I said, Apostle, I don't know what is wrong with me. I think I have a spirit of rejection. I said, I have my friends. They are talking evil about me. Everywhere I go, they are talking, they are talking, they are talking. I told her, give me a high five. There must be something in you. There must be something in you. They just can't talk. They just can't talk. The Bible says that his name was voiced abroad. Some of your names are going to go before you. They are going to go before you. And I'm prophesying. And the spirit is hearing. They are going to go before you. You will get in places where men you don't know you. Not because you introduced yourself. You know my name is Rachel. I'm a Budonian. I love coffee. No. You won't need to introduce yourself. The power of God will introduce you. I saw people the other day entered a room and demons started hitting people down. Ba, 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 ba. And that's when the new apostle grace has entered. And then I entered like I had not seen it. And then when I saw it, I did go like. Immediately some guy came with HIV, cast it out and now he's HIV negative. Immediately. Everywhere you go, somebody say, everywhere I go, say it in your spirit. I'll be known because I carry Jehovah God. His glory rests upon my life. As he is, so am I in this world. Hey, ya. Hey, ya. Hey, ya. You can't feed on this stuff and not get high. I said, you can't feed on this stuff and not get high. You know, there are people who used to come and say, I'm not coming back. They find themselves again back. They say, tomorrow I swear I'm not going. And then they come and say, why? Because this is weed, brother. Be not hard ever. Katele paye. He says, be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. But be filled by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the same feeling. You see. Remember when people used to take a lot of weed? They used to say that man is high. He's in the heights. They don't, those are dimensions. You're going higher. You're going higher. That is why me, I worry. Give us another two years. When men are feeding on this thing, you're going to see what we are going to produce. A woman came to me this week. She told me she went for an interview. Well, they had called me to recommend her for a certain interview, which she passed anyway. Because I tell my own, you can't fail interviews. Then they called her for another one, which is way better. And then she rushed. She was late for the interview. She didn't carry anything. She hadn't given in anything. And people had been interviewed the whole day. And then she enters. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. He says, uh-huh. What do you do? Da, 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 da. Where are your papers? She hands them in. You understand? Like she was last in everything. And then she said, she remembers sitting in that interview. She told God, my strength is made perfect in weakness. That evening, the guy called and said, congratulations, you got the job. Watch. 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 You see, I wish we were we were able to give people time to testify. Ah, how many of you have testimonies? Put up your hand. They might think you're lying. I wish we had time. That's why me, I worry about you guys. I fear. The reason why I fear is how are we going to contain you? How 
are we going to be able to contain you? You're deep. You're rich. You're wise. You're beautiful and handsome. You have everything that you need. How can they contain you? How? How? You see, there were days when people say, that man is born again. The guy walks like... He stands in front and says, me, I suffered. <laughs> For us, we suffered a lot. No, 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 no. Those days have come to an end. They've come to an end. Our children are going to enjoy being apostles. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They look at you and say, Papa, I want to be a pastor. And you tell them, darling, and pilots, and engineers, our children, they're going to say, I want to be a pastor. And you say, that's it. That's it. Why? Because they will not be normal pastors. No way. No way. No way. They will not be normal. There is something on our lives. It's different. It's different. I was sharing with somebody in Malaysia. I'm supposed to be flying there about March. And, and she told me she had never seen this. The Anglican Church. The Baptist Church. The Pentecostal Church. You understand? These guys are all getting together to put a meeting for Apostle Chris. You see, I said, wow. 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 Our message is not for Anglicans only. It's for the whole world. It's for the whole world. It's not for Baptists only. No. It's not for an Adventist only. It is for the whole world. It's 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 for the whole world. Said a woman friend of mine one time, I'll bring her to testify. She she went to the doctor. I told her she had stage four cancer. And she came in my office and she told me, Apostle, they told me I have stage four cancer. But guess what? I have too much word in me. Too much to worry. Too much. I refuse that report. In fact, I came that we thank God. I came that we thank God. I came that we thank God. We thank the Lord. Immediately, she had carried pain, but she ignored the pain. She had, immediately, she tells me the next, that night, that all the pain disappeared. They had taken a test of, of the fluids in the stomach. And the next thing, the doctor can't believe it. He can't find any cancerous cell. They're like, where is it gone? Where is it gone? Where is it gone? I can't believe it. Where is it gone? Where is it gone? Because we don't die of those things. We don't die of those things. People who die don't look like you. Ha! <laughs> Hallelujah. Where is our boasting? Seven face. Seven face. That's why when you go back home, don't walk like a beggar. Don't walk beggar. You hear me? Enter the room and walk like... If you're a woman... Increase your cut and it becomes a lion walk. Are you hearing me? Make it a bit more special. Because greater is he which is in you than the devil in the world. Listen. It's the wisdom. The challenge is, listen, the challenge is they never understood the double-edgedness of that wisdom. In Job, in Job, he says, all oh, that the Lord might open his mouth and speak forth wisdom. The secret of his wisdom, that it is double to that which is. He says, and that he would show thee that the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. The secrets of wisdom, they are double to that which is. That is why the word of God, which is wisdom, is a double-edged sword. It cuts asunder, separates the bone and marrow, separates the hearts for us, they really are. They don't know how to tell the two doubles. They don't know how to explain how these doubles work. Are you hearing me? They don't know how to walk. Somebody, everything is double. Do you even know what double is? They think double is two times. So when Elisha says, give me a double portion of your anointing, they think that he only wants twice the anointing of Elisha. That's not so. That is 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 not so. You see, let me explain this. 
in the dispensation of this truth. Two things draw that edge of this word. One of the lines is the opportunities and gifts. And the other lines are the judgments to execute. And that is why when a man grows in love, Thessalonians says that they may abound in love in all knowledge and judgment. That they might examine the things most excellent. That they might not have offense on the day of Christ. Because the law of liberty that set us free is the very law that judges us. We are too free not to be judged of God if we screw up with the life that we carry. He says that everything that may be known of God is manifest in them because it has revealed, been revealed unto them. Are you hearing me? That men are now without excuse. You don't have an excuse to be a success. He says, because all the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You, can't, you don't have an excuse anymore. You can't say, me, I failed because some cousin of mine stood in my way. No. You no longer have an excuse to be sick. You no longer have an excuse to die of disease. You no longer have an excuse to be, not to be a success. You no longer have an excuse not to increase. You no longer have an excuse not to multiply. You no longer have an excuse not to, not to attract. You no longer have an excuse not to add. Because the invisible things of the creation, they're all now clearly seen. And that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Everything you want to know of God is shown in them. Why? Because he has reshowed it unto them. Why? Because that's the pattern. The pattern is when revelation comes to your spirit. Are you hearing me? And then he shows you who he is. The Bible says you manifest. And what you manifest is everything known of him. And so you're without excuse. Because everything invisible has been made clearly seen. The essence of revelation is that everything invisible, everything we could not see, has now been both apocalypsed and <laughs> now for Are you hearing me? It's made manifest. You don't have, but I don't see. You see, that's the problem. The problem is not that you don't see. The problem is that you don't have faith that you see. Are you hearing me? That's the double-edgedness of the wisdom. And, and that is why when you, when, you, when you look at the essence of the doors and windows, eh? let's draw this double edged list. God has appointed windows and doors. You, you've read of the scriptures where there are doors of utterance and windows to, you know, try and test me for you shall see how I shall open the windows of heaven and bless you. You understand? Now the double edged list of these windows and doors works in this way. Windows are for revelation to access concepts, ideas, insights. Are you hearing me? Visions. That's what windows are for. You remember in Malachi when he said, bring you all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now where we said the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. The word there for blessing, Barak, also carries the root word, the source of blessing. In fact, it's not blessing. It's not the car, the house. It's the source of blessing. You receive something that produces blessing. You understand? That is why the essence of a new creature, as Paul defines it, is a miraculous faculty. Not, an, not one which receives miracle. No. It is the faculty which makes miracle. It, it, God, God has not called you to do miracles. Or receive miracles. He, he has called you to be the miracle. So when you do, you are what you do. I don't know if you understand you, you are not a healer. You're healing. <laughs> you understand? You, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not a blessed only, but you're the blessing itself. The very source of blessing. And it can come as an idea. It can come as a concept. It can come as anything. Insight, perception into something small. That is what you chew on. It attracts everything that you need. And then it produces the gift out of your own potential. And then the doors provide for that opportunity to light up that room. That is why when he talks about doors, he talks about the provision for the potential, the gift on your life to shine out. That is why when he is asking the church for prayers, he is praying that God would open unto them a door of utterance. He is not opening unto them a door of revelation. Revelation is in the windows. You understand? The windows reveal, the doors open. The opportunity for us to expedite. The opportunity for us to, to work out. The opportunity for us to function in what has been revealed. Sometimes you don't need money. You just need a small concept. Bill 
Bill Gates was a little normal boy Tyson when he was young. All he needed was just one idea. That when Helen Packard met the computer, they will not have a source of operating system. He didn't know how to make an operating system. But he had a wisdom to contact the man which can make an operating system. And then he had a wisdom to enter into a contract with Helen Packard to make an operating system. Which he didn't know how to make. But the wisdom told him that he can... Co- God, God had to create a place where he can connect to the guy of that wisdom. Are you hearing me? Said that he can buy that operating system at five thousand dollars. Come, come with it as one which has made it build or need to make his his Microsoft Windows idea. Are you hearing me? And and one story is told that when he was a kid, his grandfather used to tell him, "When you tithe, God will open the windows of heaven. Windows of heaven. That's why I call it windows." You see? Now that concept is what makes the man what? Because all he needed, you see, in this world, in this world, you just need one vision. One vision like this. And you have the whole world. You just need one concept. One concept like this. And it can make you rich for the rest of your life. But you, you just want to work. And work until you die. You are applying strength because the iron is blunt. Now, for me as a preacher, for me as a preacher, all I can access is insight. And insight into revealed truth is actually prophecy. So I speak forth in your future. I'm aligning you to a course and purpose. I come to you, Paul says, that I might impart into you some spiritual thing that in the end you'll be established. I can align your course of destiny by reason of the gospel. And I'm a success because I carry insight. If I don't have access to that window, that particular window, are you hearing me? that particular window you can be a preacher all you want but if you don't carry the insight for what is in your spirit to reveal to the millions and multitudes that are waiting for you you'll only minister to only a handful why because you don't have enough food for them to feed the other day i found a pastor quarreling with his members because they're no longer praying and i say man shepherd do you have enough for the sheep to eat don't you think they know the difference between rema and something like rema when they ate manner they knew the Bible says it tasted like like what like what like what like what yes it tasted like but it wasn't it wasn't they knew the taste of it they knew the taste of it they knew the taste of it you see let me tell you something I've realized that a preacher can receive Rema against his convictions and his personal work and he confuses that rema for the rema of men are you hearing me and sometimes arrange discourses confuse us because they align our heads to minister what we feel we can by order make men understand yet in its own sometimes these orders that we create in our own heads are not the orders of the spirit God was narrating stories, for example. He was narrating, so begat so, so begat so. Then he says there was a man called Jabez. For the mother begat him when he was... You see, God, listen, God can, can even minister out of order to create order. Read the verses before, verses 10. What does it say? You read, read. Verses 8, 7. And the sons of Hela were Zaris and Zehoah and Esna. Uh-huh. And Kos begat Anub and Zobeba and the families of Ahahel and the son of Harun. Uh-huh. And Jabez, where did Jabez come from? God just got one cut story, put it in the middle of narration. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called him name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him in sorrow. Next verse. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh God, that thou might just bless me and indeed enlarge my cause, and that my hand might be with thee, and that thou wouldest me keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. The moment he finished that story, he couldn't take. Where was I? Next verse. And Shalom, the brother of Son and begat Mehira, which was the father of the Lord. Now, if somebody was judging God, they would see this is disorganization. They would tell God, listen God, why don't you create order? Where is Jabez from? People need to understand the context to explain where Jabez comes from. But for you, just got a story and threw it in there. They would have wanted to correct God. But in the very mind to correct God, the spirit of divine purpose and order attests that in those namings, there was a man which is reading. And at that particular point, at the appointed time, divine purpose wants to ill align him to enlarge his territory. And to God, it's important that that territory is enlarged and naming names. That you first enlarge the territory and continue with your names. God is interested to serve you than to talk. God 
God is interested to reveal to you than to just talk. And how is called the God of order? Because for us, we think the order is having an arranged summary, which makes sense. You see, Apostle, you speak many scriptures. Why don't you just skip to one point? You see, 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 see. And I want to ask this guy, why do you think I preach that way? Because see, the, listen, the most articulate dispensation that approves Rema in a man's spirit is his total yieldedness to the spirit of unction. Because what unction does, it does not prepare me to know what to share. It just opens my mouth and fills it with good things. And all I know for the best I know, that somehow in the things that I've shared, I've probably said 17 words that are not yours, but there is one which is yours. And the rest you can leave for the rest, for whoever came for it. So everybody goes back with their own mind. Are you hearing me? But at least everybody has received drama. Are you hearing me? Now, there are instances where we think Rema is what to preach. Until we understand the order of the Spirit is how to minister against what God has appointed in that timing of the Spirit. If you lose the timing of the Spirit, you can never minister to the hearts of men because the hearts of saints pant after eternity. They know what they want. You cannot tell, listen, every man knows what ministers to them and what doesn't minister. Shepherds do. They now beat these sheep. Why are you? No, listen. Every man knows what feeds his spirit. If he's a babe, it's only a matter of time. He will settle. But most importantly, I must be found with insight. Because that's my window. All you need in this world is worth just one idea. Some of you are struggling because you've refused to open your spirit to this one thing that can change your life forever. It could be a concept, it could be an idea, it could be an invention. The Bible says wisdom is the mother of all inventions. There is nothing in this world that was created without wisdom. Even the Einsteins, if they never spoke in tongues and never believed God, it doesn't mean that they did not yield their spirits to the reason of wisdom. And that is why the Bible now speaks of strangers. He says men have been given glory and honor and that they want nothing in this world. And the Bible says, but they get not the power to receive thereof. And strangers come and eat thereof. And he says it is an evil disease. Why? Because I've realized that even men which are not born again have understood these dimensions. They go in the spirit, yield to Jehovah God indirectly, without even knowing what they're doing. And before you know that, one man gets one concept. Facebook. And he hits the whole world. Now Facebook has 400 billion followers. It's like the third biggest country if it was a nation. One little guy had an idea down in a street and place nobody knew. Somewhere on Scooby Street 23. You understand? Now there's somebody here. You have one thing that can change Uganda, but you're just seated there. You, you go, oh, you're taking yourself small. You understand? You're repeating men's ideas. Listen, I pray that God will give you something that is yours. That when men look at it, they say, look, everybody did this, but there's something that came from Uganda. It was some guy, he used to come to Fanero every Thursday. I pray, I pray that God hates those days. He'll say it was some woman, she used to sit there and keep quiet, but things were boiling in her spirit. Eventually, insights, ideas, concepts, the source of blessing. So when blessing comes, it carries the market for it, the doors. That what comes in your spirit to sell carries men with the interest to buy it. That what comes in your spirit as revelation attracts men to come and listen. That what comes out of your spirit as an idea attracts men to buy it. Men will pay millions for what is coming out of your spirit. Men will pay multi-millions. The sun for sure will not go down without men blessing you. Why? Because you carry something that they need. Oh God, wisdom. He says he gives it liberally for whosoever asks. Now I've seen men which carry windows but without doors. I've seen men which carry doors without windows. And the guy stands in front of multitudes of people and he doesn't carry the revelation to feed them. 
they have an opportunity to stand before princes, but the spirit on them is not diligent enough. It will attract these men that are mean. He says, show me a man which is diligent. For he shall stand before kings and not before mean men. And how the opportunity you carry one day for the door to open to you to stand before kings. And then you deliver things. And then kings place you in a place and say, no, he doesn't belong here. He belongs to minister these things to men which hold back. Mean men. Average men. Average men. Average men. Mediocre men. Are you hearing me? But let this diligence work by wisdom in your spirit. And that is my prayer for you. That God will launch you. You see, let me tell you, there are people here. You've been using iron, but it has been blunt. Are you hearing me? And because the iron challenges that you're going to use too much strength, yet wisdom is the precision to give you direction. You've taken 20 years to execute. You've taken 15 years to execute. You've taken 25 years to execute. You've taken 3 years to execute. Why? Because you don't have a certain wisdom. But that is why God sent me today to you. That you'll ask for the necessary wisdom. With all that I'm getting, child of God, get wisdom and understanding. He says in your days, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and it shall be the strength of your salvation. I'm too wise to be poor. I'm too wise to be weak. I'm too wise to be disadvantaged. The anointing working in my life is because of the wisdom upon me. Now I don't believe for healing. I know how to heal. I don't believe for breakthrough. I know how to break through. I can get disease out of a man now. Because it's a knowledge perspective. I have provided for that time in the spirit realm where the redeemed time of the spirit now serves my occasion. He says, when the spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, you shall turn it to another man and thou shalt prophesy. And whatsoever occasion serves thee, do for the Lord is with you. I realize that the end of this liberty for every child of God is to be able to redeem the time, to arrest their own timing, to execute what they want when they want it. That's why Paul says, I know how to be full. He didn't say, I pray to be full. He says, I know how to be full. You must know how to be a success. You must know how to increase in your business. You must know how to multiply as a pastor. You must know. It's not a prayer. It's, listen, it's, not, it's not a hope. You don't just expect and hope. No. The first meeting I held in my life, I rented La Bonita. And I went into that room when many people were not there. I remember that day. And then I stood on that stage. And then I saw La Bonita full. And I said, God, thank you. It was the beginning. Of course, some people expected or thought that we're going to see two people. The first day, we filled La Bonita until it overflowed. The first day of our meeting. Why? Premeditated. 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 God is raising a generation that knows how to be rich. It knows how to increase. It knows how to bless. It knows how. It just knows how. It just knows how. A woman recently came to my office and says, I have prayed for a child. There's no man of God I've not gone through. And I've prayed for a child, man of God, and I've failed to get a child. And then in the spirit, I remember leaving my body. Are you hearing me? And then I could see. You see, when, when the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick, they think we have to physically lay hands. Are you hearing me? But in the spirit, I left my body like this. And then I saw my spirit so high. So in S-O-W. You understand? High. And then I looked down low on this woman. And then I saw my spirit go on this woman. Are you hearing me? And putting my spiritual hand on her tummy. And inside I started to see operations. Are you hearing me? Things changing. After one month, she came and said, I'm pregnant. We know. Tell your neighbor, we know. We don't hope, we know. Listen. There's a wisdom that can get you from where you are. But men never understood the double-edgedness. It was in the windows of revelation and the doors of opportunity. That's where it swings from. That's the mind by which God functions. The word of God only illuminates you to execute and manifest. Every window that comes by your way is for a door. And that is why you can never worry when men work out of doors when you still have windows. You'll carry enough to attract men. I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. Doors will open before you from today. You're receiving insight this evening. You're receiving concepts. 
You're receiving revelation. Do you realize that whatever is made manifest in them is because God has showed it to them? So the moment God shows them, it manifests. The moment you get revelation, it manifests. Now that I've shared it. Now that I've shared it. It is manifest in you. And when men see it out of your life, they will say, this is God. We have learned God through you. Let me tell you, they that know their God shall do mighty exploits. They know. They know. They know. The Bible says, for they know, even as they have been known of God. <laughs> so the Bible says, now that you know, even as you're known of God, in other words, that's the line by which it swings. You know God as He knows you. <laughs> but now after you've known God, or rather unknown of God, you know God as He knows you. He knows you enough for you to know Him. You, you cannot know Him if He hasn't known you. And to the degree He knows you, it's to the degree you know Him. Now listen. He became too desperate and released it and says wisdom cries out on the street. And they refused it. And then he came through prophets and diverse manners and ways in sundry times. And then he says, okay, now this is cannot work. He says, but now he speaks us to, uh, to us through his son Jesus. The Bible says he has been made our wisdom, our redemption, our sanctification. In whom I hid all traces of wisdom. In other words, you have all the wisdom. And that is why judgment came from the queen of the south. Are you hearing me? He says, for the queen of the south shall judge this generation. Why? Because, let me tell you something. The judgments of God come on the church in the end times because of what God expects them to know. Not what they are doing and what they are not doing. That's why he realized that the very ingredient necessary for that time was knowledge. And he says, okay, in the last days, knowledge shall increase. Let me increase it. You understand? Because they need it. He knows I don't want to judge a man when he doesn't know. He says, okay, in the last days, men shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. And after that, he realizes he must send out the necessary hunger for that knowledge. And he says, in that day, I shall send out a hunger and a famine. Not for blood or water or food, but of the hearing of the words of God. And what happens? Men go where? North. Men go to the east and west, Mediterranean and the sea. Searching out for the word of God. And he says, young virgins faint because they lack this knowledge. Now in our times, men want to hear God. People are tired of genics and lies. They are tired of manipulations. They are ready to go everywhere the word of God is. Are you hearing me? And then you realize they don't go to the south because the south was charged from where they came. Praise the Lord. Now in the end time, wisdom comes to us and the queen of the south judges us. Why? Because she listened. The Bible says she came. She paid the price to come from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear wisdom. Not from where you get it in Chireka. He says, but now one with greater wisdom than Solomon is come. And that is Christ in you and me, the hope of glory. Are you hearing me? We must go everywhere this wisdom is. We must bear a price for this wisdom. We must give, we must pray, we must seek God. We must be separated, we must be consecrated. We must let go of that which does not build God. We must let go of that which we cannot keep, to keep that which we cannot lose. We must count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, for whom we count all things but dung that we may win Christ. Why? Because the days of knowledge are come. Men are not going to believe, be believing God for healing. They'll just be healing. Men are not going to be believing God for finances and breakthrough. They'll just be providing finances. Are you hearing me? Why? Because that's who we are. A girl one time came to me and told me I don't have rent. And I told him, I don't know when do you want it. And then she said, it's soon. I told her, how do you want it? He said, though maybe, I don't know. I don't care whether it falls from a tree or from the heavens. I told her, it shall be done as you've said. Who was there when she testified? Money fell from heaven. Who was there? Put up your hand. Money fell, a bundle. The challenge is she asked for million, two million. And exactly, that's what fell. Let me tell you, we have seen God. We have seen God. We have seen God. And now I understand, it was only a lesson from my master. 
Master, we have no taxes. Go in the fish. Get a tax. The first fish you shall pick out. Get a coin. Go pay for you and me. The man which knows even how many should come when he needs to pay taxes. Hey, Men are going to get to places where one day guy says, I, 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 I need to parent mass. Rokoyan. Then he goes and then he pays. Not by power. Not by might. But by his spirit. Ah, but I don't believe it. It's up to you. Use your blunt iron. <laughs> uh, wisdom. Somebody raise your hands and speak to God. You are doing something new. Speak to God every day. I want you to speak in tongues. Get a hold of this. You are touching me afraid every moment of my life. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe. You are doing something new in my life. I feel God is doing something new today in your life. Come on, somebody. Speak in tongues. You are doing something new. Speak in tongues. Every day of my life. You will touch me and pray every morning of my life. Oh, I believe. Oh, I believe in you. Oh, I believe. Lord, I believe in you. Oh, because you went to the I need to call out certain things out of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that it's your time to bring forth. I say it's your time to bring forth. I command potential to come out. I command ideas to come out. I command concepts to come out. I command intentions to come out. I command insights. To come out! Hey! Hey! Hareba Kayala! Kareba! Receive it now! Receive it now! Holy Spirit, help those people! The power of God! 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 Hey! Hey! Listen! Oh, help us! Listen! Listen! Some of the most successful business people in the world are in this room today. Right now I release that anointing. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Some of the most anointed men and women are in this room today. Are you ready? Whoever you are, Holy Ghost! Pastor! Receive it in the name of Jesus. That lady in my room. Just put your hand on her. Just put your hand on her. Mark. Mark, put your hand on her. Yep. Yep, receive it. In the name of Jesus. 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 
what the world needs is in your spirit. What Africa needs is in your body. It's inside you, woman. It's inside you, sir. It's not in the world. Greater is He which is in you. Some of these people here, there's some space here. Because you went to something. I see nations open up, open up. Listen, raise your hands. Most especially if you know your minister. I see nations open up, open up, open up. In the name of Jesus. Receive that power. Receive that wisdom. Receive that glory. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. change your life. Say, I want Jesus today. Can you put up your hand and I see you? I've seen one there. I've seen another one. Put up your hand and say, I want to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Put up. I've seen another one. Put up. I've seen another one. I've seen another one there. I've seen another two. Put up and say, I want to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Oh, yeah, yeah, my God. I see another one in the back. Now you repeat these words after me. Even those in the overflow. Say Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart. 
and I confess with my mouth that you died and rose again from today your both savior and lord of my life amen the message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International for more information contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5pm to 8pm You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero Fenero, make manifest